Good morning, Upper Elementary. I am so glad to have you here today. This is our new little guy, Memphis. He's trying to play with the computer screen, the laptop, so now I've got him. <laughs> Down you go, kitty. All right, let's get started with our class time again. I miss seeing you. Um, I'm filling in for Miss Penny today. You know, God tells us that um, we need the church um, to support each other and to love each other, and we're supposed to meet regularly. And so even though we can't meet together in our church building, it's wonderful that we still have tools like this that we can see each other and learn together and know that we're all doing our Bible lessons together until we meet again. And the wonderful thing about worshiping God is that we can do that from anywhere. We can sing to him, we can pray, we can talk to him without ceasing all throughout our day. And we can study the Bible whenever. We don't have to wait to be in the church building to do those things. We can do them anywhere. And so I hope that you are putting that into practice this week. All right, we're going to dive into Hebrews today. Before we do that, let's say our, our letters. You can say them with me. And ready? Romans, 1 Corinthians, 2 Corinthians, Galatians, Ephesians, Philippians, Colossians, 1 Thessalonians, 2 Thessalonians, 1 Timothy, 2 Timothy, Titus, Philemon, Hebrews, James, 1 Peter, 2 Peter, 1 John, 2 John, 3 John, Jude, Revelation. All right, I know you guys are on top of that. I know you know those books. It's always good to practice them. All right, let's see. I am going to have you do something for me. I want you to think of the most. You know what? Before we do that, let's say a prayer. Okay, it's important to open our time in prayer together. So, dear Father, um, as we get into Hebrews, I pray that you open our hearts and minds to the things that you want us to learn. I pray that we can be an encouragement to the people around us, to our families, and that we can be patient and kind and loving. And Lord, I pray that my words will be your words and that I can speak your truth to these kiddos. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Okay, now I want you to do something for me. I want you to think of the most amazing thing that you've done this week. The most amazing thing. And if you can think of something really, really amazing, then you will, oh, that's backwards, isn't it? You will earn pudding cups delicious pudding cups okay i know you all like pudding cups see if you can think of the most amazing thing and come tell me about it right now hmm yeah that's just not really that amazing sorry try again think of something really amazing to tell me that you did this week Really, really, really good. Mm. No, sorry. That's just not good enough. That's not very good. Okay. Obviously, if I were to give you that kind of reaction every time you tried to share something really amazing with me, you probably wouldn't want to come talk to me anymore and tell me anything. Oh, okay. So now I'm going to read um, a chunk of our scripture today, and you will want to get out your Bibles and turn to Hebrews chapter 4. We're going to be looking at Hebrews 12 through 16 today. Right now I'm going to read Hebrews 14 through 16 to you, and then we're going to try this again. We have a great high priest 
he has gone up into heaven and he is Jesus, the son of God. So let us hold firmly to what we say we believe. We have a high priest who can feel it when we are weak and hurting. And we have a high priest who has been tempted in every way, just as we are, but he did not sin. That was my cat. So let us boldly approach God's throne of grace. Then we will receive mercy. We will find grace to help us when we need it. All right. So Jesus is our high priest. So let's try this again. But instead of telling me something really, really amazing that you did, I want you to come say to me, um, you know, I really, nothing I can possibly do is really all that amazing, but I would just really appreciate some grace and a little bit of mercy and and we'll see what happens all right see how that works okay so you might get a better result that way but this is an example of how we are to approach god okay the throne of grace um you know it doesn't matter in the long run, how much and how hard we work and what we do, those things are very important. Don't get me wrong, but it's not going to earn you this pudding cup or something a lot more special um, like salvation. We need Jesus for that and his grace. All right, so let's go ahead and dig into our lesson. Let me pull up my PowerPoint for you. Share that. Bye bye. Okay, our great high priest. And we're going to look at Hebrews. I think we're just going to stick to verses 12 through 16 today. Hi, Vela. <laughs> We're just going to stick to verses 12 through 16 today. If you want to go on on your own and read chapter 5 through 11, that'll, that'll be your extra credit. Our great high priest. All right. So this is a high priest, and you've studied about them in the Bible before. The high priest was selected selected among men to represent uh, men to God and that the high priest he kept this office for life until he died and he was the leader of all the priests and he was set apart from the other priests um, because he was allowed he had the privilege of entering into the most high holy place in the temple, the Holy of Holies, um, on the Day of Atonement. That was once a year, and he offered sacrifices for the sins of all the people. Well, so when we read Hebrews, in Hebrews that Jesus is our high priest, that means that he offered himself as the final sacrifice for sin, for our sin, and he remains he remains on duty forever, and he's always pleading our case before God the Father. He's always going to God, pleading our case, um, interceding as a high priest. Let's read. Hey, Vela, can you take the kitty and go play with him, please? Thank you. Bye-bye, Memphis. All right, sorry. So let's go ahead and read Hebrews chapter 4, verse 12. The word of God is living and active, and it is sharper than any sword that has two edges. It cuts deep enough to separate soul from spirit. So what does this mean, that the word of God is living and active? You can take them into the living room, sweetheart. Thank you. Oh, kitty cats, I tell you what. All right. 
question again. What, what does it mean that the word of God is living and active? What does this possibly mean? Well, when we read the Bible, the Holy Spirit uses it to judge our actions and our thoughts. And this means that when we have done something wrong, then the Bible lets us know about it and it reminds us. Um, but we have to, in order to get that benefit, because it is a benefit, we need to know when we do something wrong, um, we have to believe that the Bible does come from God and it is his true word. For example, Israel in the Old Testament, after they came out of Egypt, they were not allowed to enter the promised land, that whole generation of people, and into God's rest because they didn't believe God's word. And we learned this in the previous chapter of Hebrews in chapter 3, verses 19 through chapter 4, verse 3. You can go back and look at that later. It's important when we read God's word, the Bible, um, that we know that it judges our hearts. It's important that we don't turn away from it and reject it and forget about it, but, but we believe what it says about our sin and that we turn away from our sin. We repent and then we trust God. And then we learn in the next verse in Hebrews 4.13 that nothing God created is hidden from him. His eyes see everything, and he will hold us responsible for everything we do. So nothing in all creation is hidden from God's sight. He knows everything. He knows every sparrow that falls. He knows every hair on our head and the number of hairs. And so therefore, we shouldn't trick ourselves into thinking that we can just ignore the Bible and what the Bible says, and live any way that we want to, and not face judgment for it. Because God knows everything that we do, and his word exposes, shines light on that sin in our lives, so we can turn away from it. For example, if someone has secretly stolen something, he might think that he's gotten away with his crime, but... Every time he reads the words, you shall not steal from the Bible, he is freshly aware that God knows that he is a thief. And one day we all have to give account. We have to explain before God what we've done. Whew, that could seem really scary and overwhelming, but... The good news is it does not have to be because we learn right in the next verses that we have a great high priest and he has gone up into heaven. He is Jesus, the son of God. So let us hold firmly to what we say we believe. We have a high priest who can feel it when we are weak and hurting. And we have a high priest who has been tempted in every way, just as we are, but he did not sin, so let us boldly approach God's throne of grace, and then we will receive mercy. We will find grace to help us when we need it. So with confidence, we can draw near to the throne of grace. Once we realize that God sees everything and he knows everything, and that he's going to judge everyone, it could be really easy to be afraid. But the writer in Hebrews tells us that if we have trust in Jesus, we have a place of rest from trying to, to always do the best thing, do the best thing, do the best thing, okay? We don't have to live that way. We can want to do the best thing because we love Jesus, not because we're afraid, that of judgment. Jesus was like us in every way, um, so he can, he understands what we struggle with, but he didn't sin. So, because he didn't sin and he was that perfect sinlessness, it made him the perfect substitute, the sacrifice for our sins. So now he is both our high priest, he goes to God on our behalf, 
and he is the sacrifice. So he offers the sacrifice to God for our sins, to cover our sins, and he is the sacrificial lamb. And he's always pleading before the throne of God, day and night, forever for us. So later in Hebrews, a little bit more about the high priest, so you understand this better. In Hebrews chapter 7, verses 23 through 27, it says that there were many priests in Levi's family line. The Levites, they were the priests. And death kept them from continuing in office because once they were dead, they were done with their job. But Jesus, he lives forever. So he will always hold the office of priest. And people can now come to God through him, and he is able to save them completely and for all time. Jesus lives forever. He prays for them. And a high priest like that really meets our need. He is holy, pure, and without blame. And he isn't like other people. He does not sin. So he is lift, lifted high above the heavens, and he isn't like other priests. They need to offer sacrifices day after day for all that sin. First, they bring offerings for their own sins, and then they do it for the sins of the people. But Jesus gave one sacrifice for the sins of the people, and he gave it once and for all time. And that means for everybody in the past, Everybody in the future, everybody now, everybody once for all time. And he did it by offering himself. So how does this, to wrap it up, how does what we've learned in Hebrews fit into God's great plan in the Bible of redemption to save us? So here's the way, let's walk through this. God's word shows our sin. It shows us our sin. It exposes it. And it makes us aware that we need to be forgiven for that sin. So therefore, we should run to the throne of grace where we can find mercy and forgiveness from God. But there's only one way for God to show mercy because he can't overlook our sin because he's a just and righteous judge, and he has to punish sin. That's the consequence of sin. But instead of punishing us, he poured out the punishment for sin onto Jesus, his son. So now, anybody who puts their faith in Jesus, who loves him, obeys him, does what he says, um, and the work that he did on the cross, can rest from their labors, from always trying to be the best and do the best and try and earn that salvation. It's a gift. We put our trust in Jesus because now he's the sacrifice and he's also our high priest. He goes to God for us. All right, question for you guys. What does it mean that God will hold us accountable for everything that we do? You can pause it if you need to. And who is our high priest? I know you know this by now. <laughs> when we need help, Hebrews 4.16 says we should go to the throne of grace. What is that? What's, what does this mean? All right, and here's your extra credit. Read Hebrews uh, chapter 5, verses 1 through 10, and see if you can answer, who does God save? according to Hebrews chapter 5, verse 9. And here are your worksheets for today. I know that Miss Penny was going to try and mail paper copies out to you guys. Um, in case she doesn't have everybody's addresses, I'm also going to make these worksheets available on our church website, just like we did for Wednesday's lesson for the other kiddos. So there will be a link to download them, parents. And finally, here's a supplemental video to show um, to your kids. It's from the Bible Project, and we've been using these um, th uh, throughout our lessons as we study. I go th work our way through the Bible. If you're not familiar with the Bible Project, it's an amazing series of roughly eight-minute videos that give an overview of every single book of the Bible 
and themes of the Bible, um, special words, what they mean. It's very well done and very well researched and, and accurate. Uh, you can access it on either YouTube or right now media. And if you go to YouTube and search for Bible Project Hebrews, you'll, it'll come up looking like this. The picture will look like this. And then it'll say Overview Hebrews. And then it's from the streaming channel Bible Project. Okay. <coughs> Share. All right. Well, that's all I have for you guys. And thank you so much for working through this with me again. I know there was some really deep stuff in there and we are almost done with the Bible. You guys, we're getting so close. So I encourage you to keep studying, keep reading, keep being nice to your siblings. All right. I'll see you guys later. Take care. Bye.